Twitter is the ideal medium for me to share with anyone who cares what the world looks like to me daily. And I, and I had these thoughts before Twitter, and they would just evaporate at the end of the day, and no one would know it except for me and my little private mind. But now there's Twitter, I said, oh, let me share that. So I'm watching the Super Bowl, and wow, they did a quick calculation. A 50-yard field goal in that stadium would deflect a third of an inch to the right because of the rotation of the earth. <laughs> That's a thought I have. And so I, so I tweeted that. But, oh my gosh, mind blown. And then, blah, blah, blah. so people, turns out people like hearing this intersection of science and pop culture. I have come to learn. Here's another one for space.com folk. I'm sitting there at a red light and I'm thinking, hmm, that's probably red because our blood is red. But suppose we had copper for our sort of hemoglobin, you know, our, our serving the role that iron does in our blood, that would turn our blood green. If that were the case, what color would the stoplight be? Yeah. I just wondered that. So I, so I tweet, it's not an answer, it's a question. Mm -hmm. I just tweeted that. And, and these are thoughts, these are all the ways that science literacy can change what the world looks like to you. And the world is quite a playground at that point. On Christmas Day, I tweeted uh, something about Santa. I, I said, Santa knows physics, <laughs> colon. Um, red light penetrates fog more effectively than any other color of light. So Benny the blue-nosed reindeer didn't get the gig. That's why. <laughs> All right. So, so that relied on you knowing that Rudolph is the subject of that, without even mentioning Rudolph, that it's, a, it's timely because of the holidays, and it's Santa, treating Santa as a real thing, as an excuse to get some more science in. Santa is also my placeholder anytime I reference the North Pole. You know, Earth rotates in the North Pole, and Santa knows this. You know, I just, it's just fun to just do that. And once again, it's the intersection of science and pop culture. And I try to throw in something that might make you smile. They become ideal sound bites, because then you'll share it with someone at the cooler, whatever. But I have these thoughts anyway. I'm not trying to, this is just how I see the world. And so, yeah, that's just, it just spills out of my head. That's why people come to me and say, oh, can you give me the latest news? No. Could you tell me whether, no. Here, follow this person, here's this website. If you're gonna follow me, it's because stuff is just falling out of my head and you're gonna look at it. And I'm, but I'm amazed every day I wake up, I say, I have how many Twitter followers? What, maybe I should remind them that I'm an astrophysicist, they can still pull out, you know, <laughs> here's your chance. <laughs> There's still time to unfollow me. And so, but it's a, it's a huge number and I'm flattered and honored that that many people entrust their visual awareness and the brain time to explore what I might have to say from day to day. Space.com.